Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's uh, time for Off the Press. It's uh, a period where we have a quick review of uh, the major headlines making the news across the country. And this morning, we are going to be joined by Mr. Chris Wandu and uh, uh, Ifi Oji. I would like to say good morning to Mr. Wandu. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Ifi Oji, uh, joining us virtually. Thank you so much and uh, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we're going to kick off with stories on the Punch newspapers this morning, see what we can quickly find here. Yeah, I see something already on uh, petrol scarcity, uh, fuel rather. Um, uh, fears of a petrol scarcity looms as tanker drivers halt operations. It also says uh, CBN uh, decries speculation as Naira plunges and exchanges for 465 a Naira to the dollar. Also, government has no business running refineries, says Oshimbajo. Um, all, um, also on the point this morning, only Lagos, Kano, and Ogun, and also the FCT still conducting COVID-19 tests, says PTF. Um, Edo 2020 is also making the headlines this morning. It's been in the news for the last few days. Um, it says INEC um, observers uh, hailed poll as a group blames card readers and other hitches. APC, PDP, um, continue verbal war, clash over th uh, thugs funding. Um, also this morning on the Punch newspapers, Obasaki leads victory parade, says lions and tigers now in zoo. Um, Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, Ekiti, and Oshun secondary and primary schools reopened. That's also on the Punch this morning. We have arrested a suspected terrorist and kidnappers in Oyo Park, says the OPC. And also, finally, APC concedes defeat, admits Edo poll was free and fair. These are the major stories on the uh, uh, Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, who do I? I think I will go with uh, if you are G first. Let's just quickly bring you in uh, to quickly share your thoughts. Please go ahead. Um, I just want to just make a quick uh, comment. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say this morning, but I have a quick comment to make on um, the Obaseki's uh, victory parade and just the idea of, I think there's a general consensus in Nigeria, especially with the electorate, that um, it was a free and fair election. And I, I, I think it's a good, uh, it, it, it bodes well that the APC has finally conceded defeat. And I think that moving forward that uh, hopefully we see more uh, free and fair, non-partisan uh, assessment of these elections, which I think uh, occurred in this particular instance. Okay, all right. I, I was hoping you could also share your thoughts on other stories uh, on the punch. Uh, is there any other one that uh, caught your attention that you also may want to chip in on? Yes, I mean, also, we can also look at the petrol scarcity uh, and, you know, you know, just the idea that today is going to be, um, in, 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 the, the, that the, um, the operations that are hosting today is being initiated by the association. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, this sort of reminds me of what happened within Lagos State as well. When, when we had the uh, issue, the, the overall ban of um, uh, motorcycles in uh, Lagos with a certain petrol capacity. Yeah. And just the idea that they, they basically try and uh, impose bans before they actually try and find a way to either encourage or uh, incentivize in most of these instances. And I feel like at, at this point that... Um, Really, we really should be looking at uh, finding ways of, of not. I don't think a, 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 a blanket ban is, is the way forward. I think that there should be a lot more discussion with the stakeholders, especially from an authority's point of view. They need to really have a sit down and talk about how they're going to move forward. Because, I mean, today could be a, the start of a horrible, catastrophic uh, rest of the week for the, the average commuter. I mean, sorry, the average uh, commuter based on, on, yeah. on the tanker strike. So let's just see how this plays out for the rest of the week. There's also a story that I, I felt was a little um, shocking, I believe, um, that uh, just Lagos, um, the FCT, and maybe Ogun State, I believe, are still testing. Um, um, yes, it says only Lagos, Kano, Ogun, and the FCT still conducting COVID-19 tests. Um, should that be worrisome? Absolutely. I, I think you ha you're onto something here because at the end of the day, I think that we have been very, very um, lackadaisical. Maybe even not, not even from an authority's point of view, but even from the average person's point of view as well. I, I feel that uh, we, are, we are being a bit too relaxed at this point. I feel that there definitely should be a lot more testing. 
And I know that at some point, I think even WHO had give, given us some incentive to ensure that we're able to um, meet up with, the, with number, numbers of testing, to incentivize uh, the different testing centers to, to get the results and to get accurate results that are truthful and are a true reflection of what is on ground. And um, the fact that even us, as we are going about as business as usual, doesn't really bode well for our understanding of what COVID is. I know that we've been very lucky in Nigeria specifically. We, we have been, I don't know what it is about, there's a component of missing link in COVID that we are not, that we don't completely understand. I know because I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I know that that missing link is what has saved the whole of Africa. And, and hopefully we don't take this too, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't take this too casually and use it or have a, have a way of harnessing it to ensure that it doesn't happen to us in the future and we find ways of preventing it moving forward. Thank you very much, uh, Ifi Oji. We're going to move to the Nation newspapers now uh, with Mr. Chris Wandu uh, to, of course, get some of the stories there. Uh, there's a story on the APC uh, shifting focus to Ondo as the party concedes defeat in uh, Edo State. Um, it also says that here on the nation, caution as schools reopen in Lagos, Oshun, Ekiti, and Oyo. Um, the vice president, uh, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, also is in the news, says the federal government has no business running refineries. Uh, president Buhari's advice and others to Sean Ekiti APC probe panel uh, crashed helicopter ran out of petrol or, or fuel, I beg, beg your pardon, says AIB interim report. A few others on the nation this morning, 774,000 jobs recruitment, states get extension. Um, and also um, on the nation newspapers, um, of course, um, um, my wish for Luremi, that is coming from uh, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu. Um, Ondo 2020, it says Ondo is different from Edo State, says the APC, as uh, ADC increases political enlightenment. I am focused on winning, says SDP candidate. Let's um, quickly have uh, Mr. Chris Wando now. It's your, your go. Uh, well, um, I'll touch on the congratulatory message by um, the national um, the committee, national committee or caretaker committee of the APC um, to address the governor elect. And to me, that was a surprise one because for the first time we are seeing the APC coming out um, so quickly to <laughs> congratulate um, an elected governor from the opposing party. Um, that has not been the norm in the past. Um, the first was the president doing that, then followed by the National uh, Catechal Committee. Um, we goes to show that um, to some extent there must have been some level of division within the party prior to the election and which uh, um, put to pay some of the insinuations that um, some of the party uh, hierarchy and the new governors were not in tandem with um, the APC candidates. Yeah. Um, who came in through, uh, via the national, uh, former national, national chairman. chairman. So it was an extension of the exit of um, Oshomole from um, the, the hot seat, the seat of a um, national um, chairman of the party. So to me, that was a, a quick one, which also goes to show if the uh, party at the national level has endorsed that election, the president has endorsed that election, that to a large extent will put pay to any litigation from the uh, from their party candidate. Yeah. So that is it for me. But to me, that's a good one because that's what's supposed to be. Uh, politics is supposed to be like football where you win and lose. And then um, the loser will always congratulate the winner once it is asserting that the election was free and fair to this, to the extent, this particular one, everybody has enjoyed this. For me personally, as one of the best elections we've had um, since 1999. So that is it for me. Um, then also looking at... Um, the statement created to the vice president that um, the federal government uh, has, should have nothing to do with um, uh, refineries. And I continue to wonder why, if that is his, his feeling, why is it that we spent, um, the, this current regime has spent close to 270 billion naira in trying to revive <laughs> the alien uh, refineries, and um, which to a large extent we have not been able to realize any drop yeah. Of, of petrol. So um, if that is the case, then we should, they should hand over hand off the, um, uh, the refiners. But it still begs the question, because there were promises made in, 20, uh, in 2015 when they were coming in that they're going to um, um, build new refineries and the issue of 
fuel importation and the likes, we've been eating of the past. Five years down the line, we've not been able to have that. And um, then we can also talk about um, Ekiti. <laughs> um, I, I, I could see the statement created to the, to one of the aides of the president and uh, urging members to not to attend a probe um, being uh, instigated in, uh, in Ekiti State. Yeah. Yes, um, there's a lot of divisions within Ekiti APC. And as we are seeing it, the gap is widening uh, between the, especially within the state controlled by APC. By last count, with, uh, with the election of Baseke a few days ago, um, I think a, a APC is just leading a PDP with just one state now. And if for any reason the election coming up in, um, um, in Anambra comes in the next few months, and if APC, a PDP is able to pick that, and uh, with what is happening in Ondo now, then there will be at par, and that uh, poses a danger for the APC come 2023. So that is my take on some of the stories. There, there's also quickly there's a statement that says Ondo is not a do, um, and a statement made by the APC. How, how do you quickly react to that? No, you know, it, was, it started with a do no be Lagos. <laughs> so, now, so now it is also Undo is not Edo. Well, um, I think um, there was much at stake in Edo. I don't think they have that much at stake in Undo. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, the APC should take the PDP or any other party for granted. Yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of division in Undo states, bearing the fact that the deputy governor uh, moved away and um, joined another party, joined PDP, then moved to ZLP. Um, so the election in Undo may be tight, but I don't see it as tight as what we saw. So it could go either way um, come 10th of um, October 2020. Let's see how it pans out. <laughs> um, if you we're coming back to you next. Uh, uh, if I may just add to what uh, Mr. Wandi said, I was just gonna, I'm just going to touch on really quickly uh, the idea of uh, the federal government having no business running the refinery. Yes, he's correct. Um, but I mean, this is like 200 and something billion naira later uh, that the realization has come to uh, bear. And um, I, was on, I was fortunate to visit the uh, refineries in Wari uh, last year. And I have to say, just from an from a, um, observer point of view, it was really, really, uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, re regret from, from my, my own part as a Nigerian citizen that more couldn't be, I mean, more couldn't be done. Uh, we know that uh, Warwick, for example, has been on that term. That's the um, um, maintenance for almost uh, more than two years, I would imagine. And um, we know that that's, not, not, that's, that's typically a, a, a lot longer term than, than it would normally take for, for the maintenance work to go through. And even within that period where maintenance was going through, there was a lot of money still being pumped into uh, the refinery. So it's, it's one of those things where it's almost there's no gratification because you're not seeing where the, the uh, effect of whether or where, where that money is being spent. And uh, I, I can't, nothing can be more um, dissatisfying to anybody that is an observer that um, those monies are not spent in a much better place. Just based on what the effects of COVID have been, has been in the last couple of months, we know that the money could have really been used in so many, in so many different ways. And uh, it's, it's just a shame that that, has worked, that that is what has panned out. But we'll look to the future to hope that these kind of mistakes won't be made again. I know that some of the efforts have also been made at the modular refineries that they're talking about. I know that... We, we talked about uh, the idea of them wanting to do something about uh, the refineries in 2015 and just how, how sad it is that, that, that most of the private uh, entities have to ex um, export this oil just to bring it back, just for Nigeria to import it again. And these mod modular refineries, even at 100,000 100, capacity, can still sort of meet some of the needs, uh, yeah. the immediate needs that we, we have in Nigeria. And also, the, we're also waiting for, obviously, the Dangote refinery to uh, at 250,000 capacity to uh to just uh to, to kick off and then hopefully some of these problems will be will be a thing of the past but let's just see what goes on all right um uh, we're going to move to the tribune uh next and so what we can also find here there's also the apc congratulating uh, conceding defeat and congratulating uh obasaki as uh, isay amu and others to follow suit um it also is on the nigerian tribune it says how multiple taxation Poor power, high cost of uh, raw materials are pushing up bread prices. Um, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram exploiting poverty to recruit new members, says uh, Akufo Addo, the, of course, the Ghanaian president. Operation Burst kills four and recovers four AK-47 rifles in uh, Okeogun Forest. Um, also on the uh, Tribune this morning, um, crashed uh, Lagos helicopter didn't have fuel in its tank, the AIB report says. 
uh, parents lamenting convenience as all your schools resume and also um gazette comma 2020 now lcci charges federal government and the uh, national assembly um of course uh, still on the uh, edo uh, state elections uh, the APC also commends INEC and security agencies for success of the poll, um, says the peaceful conduct of elections and its outcome represents a victory for democracy. And do people value your leadership and uh, your leadership style of Basanjo tells of Baseki? Um, and uh, one others, how Nigeria can recover from COVID-19, and that is from the Vice President, uh, Yemi Oshimbajo. Um, it also says we are all getting tired of COVID-19, but, and that is uh, from the PTF. All right, um, these are the major stories we have on the Tribune uh, um, uh, this morning. Uh, let's uh, quickly have uh, Ifeoji, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick uh, uh, stab at, uh, I think it's almost at the masthead. Uh, it's about uh, Akufado's visits, and I think yeah, the idea of poverty within West Africa. Um, I know one of the main issues, I know that Nigeria and Ghana have had more or less an, more or less an international incident for the last year. Um, one of the issues, I think, I think it stemmed from the fact that uh, Nigeria, Nigerian uh, authorities felt that they had been uh, shut out of, or, or wrongfully uh, moved out of uh, the, the land, uh, the, 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 um, the land in the, in Ghana in Accra, and I think that was obviously touched on. I think maybe earlier this year, um, when it was actually we actually found out that it wasn't actually the uh, embassy, but more or less it was or the high commission. Right, it was more or less the um, it was more or less one of the visiting quarters of, of the residency quarters for the staff, and it had no sort of uh, attachment to the actual uh, the actual embassy. So um, one of the things I was, I was also going to mention is that some of the issues that Nigeria is having with uh, Ghana do, has to do more with the trade, with trade uh, discussions, with, with the traders, in, the, the local traders, Nigerian traders in Ghana, and also the traders in Accra as well. There's a lot, there seems to be a lot of a tussle between just having, having the right kind of products there. And, be, and it doesn't help that Nigeria has shot its borders to a lot of the West African, uh, West African uh, partners. And um, so I think people are, are saying things, but they're not saying it in full detail. There's so much that's not being said in this Af in this uh, Nigeria-Ghana uh, incident. And one of the main issues is actually trade. And a lot of the traders, and a lot of the Ghanaian traders feel that Nigeria have, have, has not really uh, been fair in terms of ensuring that these products get into Ghana so that they can trade and make money. And I think that's what, what he's talking about when he talks about poverty, uh, hitting and putting in numbers for Akai and Boko Haram. Okay, well, um, I think there's also something um, on the um, on the Tribune uh, talking about uh, multiple taxation and uh, others uh, that might lead to increase in bread prices. Can you, can you quickly also share your thoughts on that? Sure, of course. Um, I will also look at that as well. I mean, right now, I think there's the Kaduna Invest that's going on and just the idea of the ease of doing business in Nigeria being a, a thing, and it's been a it's been a, a running trend for the last uh, couple of months as well. Even I, I would even say the last couple of years, where a lot of people that would ordinarily want to do business in Nigeria locally and internationally have had serious and severe challenges, and one of them being the double taxation. And um, just knowing that some of these things are being looked at in detail and state by state, and look, looked at in in uh, more detail means that. There's a there's there's a possibility of um, there's a possibility of um, solutions for the future. All right, fantastic. Um, lastly, I think we have time for the uh, Daily Sun, uh, and I'm going to have to move to uh, Mr. Chris Wandu for that one. Let's see what we can also find over here. Ghana's president tells Nigeria bitter truth: uh, poverty is foiling Boko Haram and Al Qaeda attacks in North, East, and others. I, as he also meets with President Buhari. Fuel hike, uh, federal government banking on private refineries to solve energy crisis, says the vice president once again. U.S.-U.K. visa ban, IPO leader mocks politicians, says fear of ban responsible for credible elections in Edo State. Um, also on the Daily Sun, um, COVID-19, 24 states shun test. Only 12 are conducting tests, reveals the federal government. And uh, also at those state, Ganduje and Buni brief President Muhammad Buhari. Um, allegation that I spent three billion on Edo election is fake, says uh, Hope Uzadima, the uh, governor of Imo State. 
Um, I think that's all we're going to be taking on the sun. If we can quickly just uh, bring you in here. Yes, um, it's good that the president of Ghana is looking us straight in the eyes and telling us the truth. And um, that what he's saying is not something that we are not aware of. We are aware of that. Um, the security, security within the Northeast is rising by the day. And by the way, um, just yesterday, a, a colonel was killed um, uh, in uh, Bonu, one of the best hands um, the military have. Um, so that goes to by Boko Haram. That goes to show that um, we are still having serious uh, security challenges in the Northeast. And I hope that our military are up in arm to be able to nip this in the board. That it is poverty. Well, Nigeria is not the only country that is into poverty. We are richer than uh, most African countries. Our per capita income is higher than most African country, uh, countries. So uh, why are we not having that level of insurgency in those uh, countries too? So definitely something is wrong somewhere. Uh, which needs to be addressed. Then, uh, looking at um, um, the states, um, about 24 states um, stopping COVID. Yes. Dutch, yesterday, the PTF said that they are give, giving about um, 32 of them, 1 billion naira each. Let's see whether that will galvanize them, <laughs> whether that will galvanize them into, <laughs> into restarting the test. Um, then, I also look at the, the statement. You know, there was an initial statement created to the uh, to the governor of Imo State, which um, is also my governor, yeah. uh, where it was alleged that he said that um, he refused the result of um, a do state. Well, he has come out to deny that. I'm also going ahead to say that um, he didn't spend three billion naira uh, in a do. But for us, the people of Imo State want to know how much he actually spent. It's not just about the three. If he didn't spend three billion, how much of our money uh, went in that election? Because the way. The way we go about politics in this country is not the right way. Um, it, becomes, it looks like more of a do or die affair, um, as stated by one of our former president. It shouldn't be a do or die affair, uh, just as I stated rightly some time ago, that um, it should be <laughs> like football. Uh, winner, there will be a winner, there will be a loser. But in a do also, we should also thank um, some people, um, especially the above Benin. He did a human job. You know that the level of violence that was predicted that was going to happen yeah. in Edo State, but the peace initiative initiated by the Oba of Benin, to a large extent, was able to make most of the gladiators to be able to serve them because you can't look the Oba straight in the eyes and say you are going to foment trouble something else. So um, that should be a clear lesson to other top traditional leaders across the country. It's because of the respect they have for him. Most of our traditional leaders are just political leaders who just people don't respect any longer. So kudos to the other. Then we should also look at the situation where what is happening in schools, the schools opening um, across across board. And uh, we should be very careful. We should be very, very careful um, because we should not be because we want to open up. We rush into open schools and uh, so that most of the countries across the globe, even the developed ones, are now shutting down. You understand, yeah. and you could hear what the PTF said. They are almost, they are even getting tired of it because Nigerians are not adhering to the protocols and the rest of them. But yeah. we shouldn't take it for granted that yes, the, the fact that we are having a reduced, the reduced number of uh, people does not necessarily is because we are not testing more. Yeah. If we are testing as much as we do, we'll be having more than uh, what we are we are having presently, and that is it for me. Now, um, the, what's the way forward for most of the, especially on the political scene? Um, we should look at um, UNDO that is coming, um, take it seriously. INEC this time around got it right. And some people have been saying, no, oh, it's because um, the US is threatening to ban or not ban. And I don't think that, that is that. There's something that INEC just did this time around that is working. The result has been collected, just go straight to their website, to the, to the portal which they have. And everybody can go there to assess it. Yeah. We are not doing that in the past. That brings a high level of transparency into the system. And that's why we are not seeing violence. Yeah. We didn't see violence in the state. And you see that everybody seems to be calm. If we can take this to the next level, and by 2022, we'll be able to tidy up this, then we can make sure that right. the next election, um, general election, we might be able to get it right. And that's what I feel about it. All right. Um, that's all, all the time that we have um, on, uh, of course, uh, to have this discussion this morning. Thank you very much to uh, Chris Wandu and uh, thank you very much for, having me. for speaking with us and for joining us on this conversation. It's um, uh, been a very, very interesting very speaking much. with you both.
That's all we have for Off the Press. And of course, uh, that's a wrap also on The Breakfast. As always, your comments and observations are welcome via all our communication channels showing on your screen. We'll be back with more same time tomorrow here on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you for watching.